Howdy all you delicious people, I'm here today to review Yellowstone Season 3, Episode 7 and 8. So, for this episode, Episode 7, it's a big Jamie episode, a big reveal. The reveal really, in my mind, is just like, oh yeah, like, why didn't we ever think of this since Piletto? Um, or really just since we finally got to see... Uh, both Jamie's parents at some point, so to speak, uh, and why this didn't make a lot more sense. And I'm like, oh yeah, like that, like, uh, uh, anyways, but also going into this episode, we, or episodes, I should say, um, we have Mia being a much more prominent character, so much so that I actually know what his what his, what her pronunciation of her name is. Because I'm like, is it Maya? Is it Mia? Is it mmm? <laughs> is it mmm? <laughs> is it mmm like a soup that you just had the night before? I don't know. We'll figure it out. And then we did. So, Casey is, of course, getting his boots a little bloody in, uh, in episode 7. Uh, but then we turn around and have Monica, who's doing some volunteer work that is to be really a little bit too volunteerish, if I should say. Uh, <laughs> what does that even mean? Nothing. <laughs> what is he even saying? I don't know. We'll go and, and figure that out. So... We uh, we have some kind of fun in this episode. Uh, we have it where, like, like I guess I can say this. Like, Beth, because it's been happening anyways, uh, Beth has been buying some stocks in to the market equity people. Like, I can say that, right? Because it's already been happening. And so it seems like in these two episodes... There seems to be some real business deal on the table. So much so that the Dutton kids uh, can't ignore there's a big massive deal on the table. So much so that they eventually have to make John aware of said deal and see what he's going to say about it. We also have another uh, kind of big thing going on here. Uh, with basically Beth needing to go uh, to talk to her dad uh, because it seems that uh, both Rip and Beth are to have been kind of like living by themselves for a, uh, a certain amount of time. Whether that is to be what, I don't know, like, I don't know how many, like, is this all one week? Is it a day? What is this? Not quite sure. Like, it's filmed in a week, so. Uh, so, yeah, so we have Beth who's kind of coming to her dad and kind of figuring out, like, what they're, like, cryptically, because this is the cryptic part and we'll get into spoilers. Uh, like, and if you've seen these episodes, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But if you haven't, then, like, eventually you'll figure out what that whole ordeal is. And then maybe John might hate Rip, weirdly, now because of all this going on. Maybe he's like, no, I don't want you to see that man anymore. Like, you gotta live with me and just deal with my sh <laughs> Just deal with my sh woman. <laughs> <laughs> I say maybe, probably because that's not actually going to happen. So, <laughs> so yeah. So, we also have some important things going on with Kobe and uh, Teeter. Whether they're going to cement their relationship or whether... Uh, or not, like, things are going to work out for these characters maybe they're gonna get fired maybe they're going to eventually have us be uh in a kind of like huh kind of moment 
Um, but like, we'll figure that out when I get into spoilers about the, the whole episode. And cause like we have Tyr and Kobe, uh, like in episode seven, like kind of giving us the will they, won't they kind of thing. And Ryan's like, it's going to happen. It's in the bag. And Kobe's like, mm, eh. <laughs> so we'll eventually get to the will they won't they thing and so like we'll finally cement these two people and what is going on in these two episodes if you know exactly what i'm talking about then yeah uh we'll get to that so watch the episodes enjoy them i'm gonna like uh, like I want to say certain things, even in this cryptic-like sense, but I want to also leave something so vague enough to where you're wanting to really just understand, when I go into spoilers, what exactly I'm talking about, uh, or where exactly I'm going to go with these episodes. So, we have more of Angela Blue Thunder in this, uh, in this uh, episode, in episode 7. Uh, I don't think she's in episode eight whatsoever, but, uh, but yeah, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of deals going on in the table. So let's just, let's go into spoilers. Let's crack it out. Let's go without a doubt and go into spoiler time. It's spoiler time. It's about the time you just spoil. It's, I've stretched this long enough. Let's go into spoilers. Um, like, I don't mean to stretch it. It just happens that way where I'm like, oh yeah, maybe I should talk about this. But then I can't really. <laughs> Let me try to skirt around things and try to like, like say like some something to keep people to keep people interested in my review because they might not be. It's okay. It's all right. Like if you've hooked on to this for how long now, I really do appreciate it. I really do. I'm thankful that anybody's to come on here. And listen to this guy say words until I leave <laughs> and go on to do other things. Maybe sleep. So, in episode 7, let's get into it. Let's go into spoilers. Uh, so, in episode 7, uh, we open the episode seemingly with some cattle being taken by some cattle thief. It seems that this guy had not gone on and done this alone but it seems that there are dogs that are to go on and be stolen. And so Casey is to be hot on the case, trying to figure out who is to, of course, have stolen this cattle. And so in, uh, so in this episode, we, of course, like, let's go on to the Casey path of things in episode seven here. Uh, so that way we can go on and do other things at some point. So, Casey is to, of course, go and try to figure out, uh, who is to be selling cattle, like, very, like, very, like, right away, like, kind of the earliest point that they can go and try to, uh, sell these off and so we end up having Casey going to this spot to go and find some guy that is to of course be this culprit and so Casey is to go and chase after this guy on horseback with this rope and is to lasso this guy's neck and go and kind of choke him and then is to grab this cattle thief and like, like, tell me who you're working for. <laughs> like, hey, I'm going to give you a beating unless you like, don't tell me. Or uh, unless you like, tell me like, who took this cattle? Mm. To where all of a sudden there's a ton of people all watching Casey just like, oh my God, don't mess with this freaking guy. To where all of a sudden there's all a like a ton of guys all at Casey's office just like shaking his hand and they're like man like I really appreciate that you're doing your work that you're doing and Casey's just like hey like uh, like uh, thanks like <laughs> and so 
uh, like Casey's to go into this office and like Jamie is saying, it's like, well, dad never got that. So like, you must be like, you must be really like, uh, like getting like, like kissing hands and shaking babies after this. Holy crap. Uh, once of course Casey's making the news, like, yeah, he's going to go after everybody. He's going to, he's going to take that cattle back. Hmm. <laughs> should run for mayor or something. I don't know. Uh, anyways, so he's just doing what's right. So Casey then goes on with two livestock, uh, officers, both Ryan and of course, <sighs> uh, the other character that I can't find right away, because of course I can't. Uh, Steve. There we go. We have Casey going with Ryan and Steve to head off uh, to this one guy's house. And so Casey's knocking on the door. The guy's not coming to the door. So Casey just decides, well, okay, like, let's go on and make our way, like, to the back of this house. And so Ryan is weirdly like putting his body against this, uh, like against this, uh, like house. And so Casey's like, Hey, like, don't put your back to this house, like consistently, like be like facing this house and kind of turn. And so we of course have Ryan. That's also to like decide it. So, like, Casey is to consistently have to direct Ryan of how to, like, how to maneuver. And so, all of a sudden, there's a bolt. There's shots coming from, uh, like, the house. And so, Ryan ends up getting hit in the chest. And Casey's like, well, hey, luckily, like, you turned the way I told you to, or you would have been dead. And so, we also get it where Steve is to also get shot also. And he ends up getting some some glass in his body for his trouble. So Casey goes on and he, of course, is to kill this man. But then Casey is to find out that this guy is to have a little daughter. And so Casey's kind of emotional about that. And so it seems that... Later on, Casey is, like, later on, I think in another episode, uh, we eventually have John who says that what Casey did had made the paper uh, as, like, they're secretly talking, like, between Tate and kind of mentioning about, like, well, hey, like, <laughs> like what, what should I do? <laughs> so... Because, like, Monica is probably going to catch wind about it, uh, and eventually she does within this episode. So, uh, and we have Tate kind of going on, of like, hey, like, were you guys talking in secret? And John is just like, no, I, I don't talk uh, in secret. No, like, I hate secrets. So, but kind of, let's, let's pull back a little, because I keep wanting to, like, go into, like, other things and other episodes and whatever, but let's pull back a little bit so so jamie is to now go and talk with his assistant in this episode let's get to the jamie uh part of things so jamie is to eventually have to go and get his uh birth his like birth certificate because he is to of course be uh, like sworn in and whatever for the uh, kind of the attorney general kind of thing. Like he's technically like an acting, but now he like needs some documentation and so on and so forth. So Jamie is to go on and get his, uh, get his birth certificate to eventually find out that he was adopted. Like, that's the big reveal of episode seven. And Jamie's like, what? Like, this must be someone else. And the girl's like, nope, that's you. Like, you're adopted. And so we also have the woman who's like, well, hey, like, uh, like you didn't get this. But, like, here's to save you some Google research 
of why exactly you were adopted. And so Jamie is to find out that his dad uh, is to have went to jail. And Jamie's like, oh my god. Like, he's in jail, I think, for homicide and possibly arson, I think, is what the, the paperwork said. So... Jamie is to go back to his office because he had to go and get this birth certificate like before this whole meeting. And so now Jamie's assistant's like, well, hey, the meeting. And Jamie's like, that'll wait. And the girl's like, no, the meet." And he's like, no, just, just go away. Just kind of go away. So Jamie is still kind of working over the fact that his father had lied to him his whole life because we have Jamie who is to like they don't trust like John doesn't trust Jamie Beth doesn't trust Jamie so on and so like and so like I'm sorry like John like you wanted my like like I have to earn your trust but what is really your trust like really what is it really <laughs> What is the truth, really? Like, you've been lying to me my whole entire life, and that's how he, like, breaks in, so let's freaking cover that. So, let's cover Jamie confronting John. So, Jamie goes and confronts John, and is to, like... John immediately calls Jamie's son, and... Because he's like, well, hey, what did I lie about, son? And Jamie's like, exactly that. That you are to call me son and I'm to call you father. And you're to, like, just be so harping on me about trust that all of a sudden, like, you've lied to me my whole entire life. And so... John is to break down that... That Jamie's actual father was to, at some point, to be with John's, uh, like, girl at the time. So, meaning that, like, eventually, like, this guy, like, impregnated John's past woman, past wife. And, but what eventually happened was, is that this woman that John was with ended up getting, like, uh, like, beaten to death, like, killed by this man that Jamie is to be biologically fathered to. And so John is to go on and tell Jamie, it's like, well, hey, like now you can finally like choose who you want your father to be. A lot of people don't get that choice. You do. But like, remember that like just because, uh, like, just because, like, you're not, like, he kind of breaks it down in, like, the farming sense about the whole, like, they don't actually call the little calf the cow's, like, daughter or son or whatever, like, because, like, they just artificially inseminate and whatever into these cows and... So there's no real, like, family there. There's no relation there. Where if the cow was to go on and raise this calf, then it would be family. And that's what John is kind of saying to Jamie here. That it's like, well, hey, like, I raised you. And so that makes me your father. But then again, you can turn around and go and, and find this guy wherever he's at. And you can see if he wants to be your father. 
and see how that works out for you. <laughs> because this guy, like, who knows what he might be uh, or where he might be and, and so on and so forth. So, because Jamie went and tried to go and find where his biological father is. And so we'll see how that breaks down in future episodes if it does go anywhere so maybe we'll find out that jamie's biological father is dead maybe he died in prison maybe <laughs> could be any number of things so let me pause here for a second all right so we now have most of that covered like uh we now like i think i've like talked about all of that so I've gotten that unpacked. There's something else that kind of is left uh, in that kind of, because uh, I know there's a lot of dialogue happening there. And like we end up having John forcing Jamie to like sit down in the living room or leave it. And so to kind of have him tell uh, Jamie this story. But the whole thing about me is like the whole entire time I'm thinking, well, yeah, it makes a lot of sense for Jamie to be adopted because his mother's hair was like blonde and his father's hair was brown and his hair is black and has been black since he was a kid. So it makes no sense that Jamie actually is to be like biologically like intertwined with uh, these characters, but also thinking about it, there are dormant genes that bizarrely happen when when uh, like things are ha like there's sometimes where weirdly some kind of dormant gene of a skin tone could be a thing or whatever goofy things can happen um, where it doesn't quite make sense where all of a sudden you have like a red-headed child where you're like, okay, well, we both have blonde. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, but it's just a dormant gene, weirdly. Uh, so, kind of like if uh, a kid was, like, uh, like, easy to pick up on things and, like, becomes this prodigal genius and you're just like, okay, how did that happen? Some dormant gene happened in that kid where he loved science and, and neither one of his parents ever did. So, pushing on. So, uh, so going into this episode, we, of course, have... Uh, let's go about uh, the Rip story. So, Rip is going on to the bunkhouse to find that uh, the... Uh, the rodeo, the barrel runner girls are to, of course, be in this bunkhouse. And so Rip is like, well, hey, like, what is this? Like, Paradise Island? What's going on here? Uh, to where we also have Teeter, who, again, is kind of teasing Kobe. It's like, well, hey, how about you and me going to bed, you know? <laughs> like, wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> and Ryan is telling Kobe, it's like, well, yeah, this is 100% going to happen and Kobe's like, no. <laughs> and Kobe is telling Tweeter, it's like, hey, like, uh, like something like this, like something like you telling me uh, this could get somebody's eye poked out. So uh, Rip is going in there and eventually uh, asking Lloyd, it's like, hey, what are you doing with that young thing over there? And Lloyd is just like, well, hey, she's... <laughs> She's old enough to vote, like, meh. <laughs> and I'm just like, all right, like, hey, freaking, like, Lloyd's getting some young thing. Like, come on, like, give him a break. <laughs> give him a break, man. Uh, so, we, of course, have Mia that's saying, like, well, hey, like, you know what, since we're here, like, we can go and help you guys. We can do work, like. We're not just going to just stay here and do nothing. Like, we'll help you guys out. So Rip goes and tells uh, Jimmy, because uh, Rip and Jimmy are doing some 
uh, mission where like Rip wants to kind of like do some like brain stuff with Jimmy, like making him think, uh, uh, think about what he's going to go and, and do uh, with his future. So Rip is going on and wanting Jimmy to get this like five year old horse or something like that. And so Mia gets it instead and puts it in the tr into the the trailer, and so Rip is just like, okay, like Jimmy, who is who is that? It's like, oh, it's Mia, my girlfriend, and Rip is just like, like, what if we shoot somebody? <laughs> what if we get into a fight? Like, we don't know this girl from Adam, like. Because it seems like they always have to kill somebody in this episode. And what if this is to be that time? Uh, what if somebody's going to go to the train station sometime soon? Uh, there's too many people here. There's too many witnesses. <laughs> there's too many things going on in this ranch. So, uh, so Rip, Jimmy, and Mia are now driving along uh, to make it to... Uh, seamless, like, seemingly like this, like, practice, uh, rodeo thing to sell a horse, it seems. And so, while they're making it their way there, we, of course, have Mia, who's just, no, 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 my own minute, uh, but, like, I can understand that because how viciously I have to talk. So, uh, Mia is going on. And is to, like, mention how, like, like, certain guys and certain girls, like, how they're to wear certain things. And, like, she starts rattling off about all, like, like, I like it when a girl wears a coat and nothing else. <laughs> and I, and I like it how so, some certain guys are to wear certain things the right way and this and that. <laughs> and, and Rip is just like, are, are you serious? Like. Because, like, Mia, immediately when she comes into this truck, she's like, well, hey, do you guys listen to music? And Rip is like, well, yeah, I listen to uh, music and one thing of music alone, silence. <laughs> and so uh, Mia's like, oh, the, the silent type. Like, okay, like, I think we'll get along here. So, so we, of course, have Mia just... Da, 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 da. And it's it's great like it's great to eventually just have like and i'm kind of curious through this part here if like rip was actually supposed to be like it feels like he's like consistently holding his laughter here like i don't know if like any of this was scripted or what so it would be kind of interesting to just have them kind of break down this part and like see how like everyone was to feel during this scene where like there is some maybe some unexpected things and so on and so forth happening here but so mia goes on and is to go and talk about this one song because she's like well hey if you guys are stranded on a desert island what would be the one song that you guys would play over and over and over and pick really good because you're gonna have that one song like just played non-stop and Rip is like, well, like, I, I feel like there's another thing coming on that's really nonstop here. So we have Mia that is to go on and is to say, it's like, well, you know, the one song that I would play, it's to like Turtle on the Beach or something, some goofy song. And so never heard of it because uh, I don't know about country uh, music, but. I guess they know good enough to eventually at some point when a mass singer comes on, like, Oh yeah, I know that country star from some random, like part of brain. So <laughs> not really just kind of like, Oh, I should pat myself on the back. Eventually, if you've heard enough, like kind of certain things, eventually you'll figure it out. Uh, but anyways, let's move on here. So, uh, so Mia is to go on and is to play this song and Rip just kind of pulls Jimmy close to him and he's like, you know what? When we come back, I'm going to murder you. <laughs> I'm going to kill you. You're dead to me. 
do you ever see Psycho? <laughs> like, that's what I just wanted him to just be like, you're dead. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, like, I feel like I feel horrible for Rip. I could feel bad for him. Um, but, like, uh, like, really, he could have just told me, it. it's like, you know what, like, can we play the plot, the quiet game? <laughs> Could we just, like, not have all the female in here to be... Nah, 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 nah. Like, he could have said something, but he said nothing because he's a nice guy. He's he's very polite. He's very nice. But he could have said, like, you know what? Like, you're overwhelming me with this. Like, come on. Let, let, let's just kind of relax and enjoy our road trip. Because I know for me, like, when I get into a road trip, like, I'm, I'm putting some headphones on, listening to either some music or watching a movie or something and I'm in my own thing and like uh but anyways pushing on so who cares about what I do on a road trip <laughs> cuz I've like done plenty of them uh like across states kind of road trip kind of so yeah you kind of uh a couple hours on the road so on and so forth so uh so pushing on so because you, you tend to move around a lot when uh, uh, your father's in the military. You kind of move around and, and so on and so forth. But yeah, so you kind of move through a bunch of states and, and so on and so forth. But anyways, pushing on. So we, we have Rip take this... Uh, take this, tr uh, this truck trailer... To make it to a guy named Sid Snyder, who is to seemingly be a professional rodeo uh, guy of sorts, and not that I know sh about rodeo, um, because I don't, I'm just repeating what the show says. So, all of a sudden we of course have Sid and his son, and so Rip is kind of asking, like, hey, like, uh... Like, what is this kid going to do, like, for his future? And so, like, are you kind of gearing him up uh, to eventually be, uh, like, more into this? And, like, Sid is just like, mm, I don't think yet. Like, I think we still have some, uh, I think we still have some time here before he really gets, like, fully on into this. And so... We have Rip go and deliver this horse that is to supposedly buck uh, this kid off. And so we have this guy go on and take this horse from Rip and to use it to practice on. And the kid holds on to it. And so eventually Rip is to take back this horse because Sid is like, you know what? Like, it just doesn't work. Like, it's like... Like, it's not vicious enough to, to shake this kid off. So, like, it doesn't buck hard enough. So, really, like, we are we have nothing to do with this horse. So, eventually, uh, Rip is to go and put this horse back in the trailer. And so, Jimmy's like, like, what's up with that kid? Like, if anything, like, this horse isn't buck hard enough? Like, that makes no sense. And so Rip is like, well, here's a sense that I'm going to make to you. Like, this kid has been, like, like born and bred to rodeo. Like, this kid had been, like, hopping on goats when he was, like, three years old or something. And that this kid has been trained by pro rodeos, pro rodeo guys all of his life. And so... Like, with this guy, like, he is, like, seemingly invincible as far as rodeos go. But even him can die tomorrow. One hard, uh, like, one, one mistake, one sneeze, one something, like, he could die tomorrow. And so, what Rip is kind of telling Jimmy here is to... Like, 
really think hard about going and doing a rodeo because he could die doing it. And so really that's the lesson learned that Jimmy is to have to learn here that it's like, well, hey, like the more and more that you're just so tempted to get back here, more and more that you should just enjoy your life while you have it. <laughs> and enjoy the fact that you ended up having a girlfriend out of that uh, short-lived life of a rodeo. Uh, so cause it's also interesting to be the fact of like, well, how long is Mia really going to be like hanging on to Jimmy when like eventually she's going to have to go back into like barrel racing and so on and so forth. Like how long is this relationship? Even though I'm kind of interested to see it continue, how long is it going to last? Um, we'll kind of figure that out as the show goes along. So we uh i'm trying to conveniently figure out a way uh to <laughs> transition here uh not doing very well so oh so beth so beth is going on and is to of course be uh, going and talking to Angela, uh, Blue Thunder. Uh, and so we have them, of course, going on. And so Beth, of course, her company was called, uh, Schwartz and Meyer. And like, they have to do that, of course, on purpose to show the building sign. Because eventually once, uh, they kind of do some selling of Schwartz and Meyer's stock, we now have to understand where Beth works now and what her name is now in case we didn't remember what exactly it was because we probably didn't. So Beth is to go on and meet with Angela Blue Thunder and like Blue Thunder is kind of surprised that Beth is to have a job here. And so we have, of course, Beth is like, hey, they couldn't fire me. <laughs> like, like it'd be a huge mistake for them to fire me. So we have, of course, them talking about working together because uh, John and Rainwater are to want to have this uh, kind of put together between the two of these heads to go and try to figure out a way to take down market equities. We have Beth, who's consistently buying stocks to the point of Rourke, realizing that how much they're kind of losing money here and how much he's calling his people just saying, like, I know, I know we're losing money. Like, I know there's nothing for us to do. And so we eventually have it in the next episode where it seems that the market equity people are trying to fire back and are trying to go on and figure out how to uh eventually uh kind of make up for uh the losses that they've kind of accumulated so uh like i'm trying to feel if there's anything left into this episode that i have to go and talk about but it, uh, i don't think that there is so like, the Jamie part of this episode took up a lot of time. Uh, so <laughs> it took a big chunk of time with that whole reveal there. So now into episode eight, and there might have been something that I have to maybe rebuttal or probably forgot about. Uh, oh, like Rip. Uh, Rip eventually is going on and in the last episode, in episode seven. And... Rip is going home after that whole ordeal with Mia and Jimmy, and he's going and trying to uh, put a new tire in one of his tires, and he just starts beating the crap out of it. And both Mia and Jimmy are like, oh my god, we should just stay in this truck. <laughs> we should not go out there and try to help him because we're going to die if we do that. 
So Rip is to go on home. Uh, oh, I forgot about the whole Beth John thing. Oh my God, I forgot about that. Because uh, I just realized that. So uh, let's cover something before we cover what I was going to cover. Uh, Beth is to go on and talk to John. And so Beth is talking to John about Beth and Rip's relationship. And John is saying, it's like, well, hey, like, you going to marry him or what? <laughs> like, and so Beth is like, well, like, I think that Rip wants to be a very traditional, like, guy, but I don't think he can be traditional around you. Like, I don't think it can, like, work that way. And even when Rip does, like, finally talk to John about this... Like, it doesn't really feel like they're talking about it. It feels like they're skirting around it still. Like, you would have thought that would have been the time of just like, well, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, about that. Like, oh, yeah. Like, let, like, but yeah, it just feels like they skirted around it in episode eight. So we have, of course, Beth now asking John about marrying Rip. And John's like, well, sure, like, yeah, like, of course, he's been in our family for so long now. And like, so. And so John is to, of course, like, tell Beth, it's like, well, like, I feel like so horrible that you couldn't have, like, told me about that whole, like, ordeal that she was to tell him before. And that... It kind of feels so awful that, like, no one can really tell him things. He has to kind of just find about it, find out about it later on, or eventually just uh, never hear about it. So, Rip is to come back from this whole trip and is to go and uh, grab uh, grab a six pack of these small beers. It's like, why not just get a, why not just get like bigger, whatever, I guess there's only a certain amount of stuff that are in there anyway, so pushing on. So Rip is going and chugging these beers, Beth is going and uh, is to eventually go on and give Rip a wedding ring, or like technically an engagement ring, and so we end up having them like talk about it, but then like they're taking a long time to actually just really get down to brass tacks where Beth is just like, well, like, will you marry me? And Rip is just like, well, like, huh? Like, so are you really asking? <laughs> it's, it's like, yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, like, sure. Like whatever you want, honey. And she's like, no, like, <laughs> like definitively like marriage and this and that. And so Rip is to say, it's like, well, he doesn't have any real legitimate papers that say that he's even on this planet. And so Beth is saying, well, like, uh, like all it is is just a marriage contract and we can kind of figure that out. And like all that stuff is usually just business and it all should really just come down to is that like, we're going to both be like married and that's all that really matters. So, So Beth and Rip are seemingly going to get married at some point. And so we'll see eventually when it comes down to planning how hectic that eventually becomes. It seems that when Beth's company is starting to lose certain stocks, all of a sudden Beth is to be really upset with her assistant. And so she ends up firing her. And so <laughs> that was kind of crazy. So, uh... Yeah, I hope that seals the deal on everything. There might have been something that is lost in, like, the shuffle of whatever. So, let's now get into Episode 8. So, Episode 8, of course, let's go into what Monica is doing in this episode because it seems like she didn't have much to do in the episode before this. So, Monica is going on with a tank top and blue jeans on and Casey's like, hey, like, why are you going out dressed like that? And Monica is saying, like, well, like, I'm going and doing some volunteer work. 
what she's actually volunteering for is for her to get caught. Because Monica is to have her car kind of backfire. And so she pulls off to the side of the road and all of a sudden there's to be a guy driving along with a uh, Turek truck or T-U-R-E-K truck. And so this guy's like, well, hey, like I can give you a ride. Like it's just up the road and whatever. So Monica decides to go with this guy in this vehicle and so they drive off and he's like well hey like i can take you to this part of the field where they ha were like of course it has phone signal and because monica's to realize that she doesn't have phone signal she doesn't have cell service so monica is to kind of question like okay why does this random field have cell service and so Monica is to tell this guy, like, well, hey, like, if you get out of the car, then I'll kind of get out of the car. So the guy gets her out of the car, and we eventually end up finding out that, like, really this guy is to be after her. And, like, I immediately could have figured that out right away, because this guy has, like, this hat that has this, like, weird logo that doesn't look like the proper thing. Like, they just kind of made this stuff up like right then and there or like kind of really quickly because it's like oh this is just some random extra guy that we're to use in this episode so we're not gonna really spend the money to make a legitimate logo on a hat like no this is just something we're gonna try to do quickly uh and it just kind of comes off that way so we of course end up having uh this guy chasing after monica and like grabs her and like gets on top of her and then we have mo uh mo of course uh going and having a sniper rifle and he shoots uh this turret guy and kills him and so we end up finding out that evidently this was the guy who had captured the one sila girl uh from before i'm assuming like he's dead now what does it really matter and so now Monica with blood all over her clothes is to eventually have rainwater appear. And he's like, yeah, like you did it. Like you saved the lives of so many people, like good for you. And so Mo all of a sudden comes and like, Hey, like you're such a brave girl. And like Monica hugs Mo and like all of a sudden Mo is like covered in blood. And she's like, Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even realize it. Cause like Mo shot this guy right on top of her, so of course she's gonna be bleeding with her. Of course she's gonna be having blood all over her, but it's not gonna be hers. So now Rainwater is to go and ask Monica. It's like, well, okay, like I don't want you to just go on home. Like I want you to be kind of like having somebody with you, and so eventually like someone is to go and take monica home and she is in the shower kind of rinsing the blood off of her body so casey then comes home and is to mention like well hey like uh like what happened to you and so eventually monica and casey have to be honest about one another because Mon rain rainwater is to give monica the newspaper mentioning how of course, Casey had to go and kill somebody. So Monica is like, well, hey, you tell me about your job and I'll tell you about mine, technically. So Casey is like, well, I don't really want to talk about my job because like, I feel like uh, like I'm a bad guy and that I'm like killing people. And like, I don't want to come home and have to like say that every day that I, hey, I killed another one. <laughs> because it feels like his life is like kill or be killed every single day. And, like, he doesn't want to go home and talk about it. And so Monica is like, well, like, I would like for you to talk about it because I killed a man today. And so all of a sudden Monica breaks down. Casey jumps into the shower to comfort her. And so, like, it seems that, uh, it seems really like they should go on and, like, really talk more. But it feels like. Since Casey has taken on this job, it seems that both Casey and Monica talk even less than they did before, if they ever really did talk. 
so we also have Jamie going to uh, Casey's office. And Jamie, of course, is to tell uh, Casey about that big deal that he's to have with Market Equities about the Yellowstone Ranch. And so Casey's like, well, hey, like, I want pen to paper up on this thing. Like, I don't want some, like, quote that you were given by somebody. Like, because Jamie is to say, it's like, hey, Beth doesn't trust me with this information. So I'm going to hand this over to you so that way you can hand this over to Beth. And so Jamie is to retell Casey about this offer on the ranch. And Jamie's saying, it's like, well, yeah, like, if anything, like, the ranch probably has a good, like, year or two before it starts to, like, crumble. And plus, like, these market equity people, like, they want this land really badly. And they're going to do, like, whatever they need to do to get it. And so this is, like, a fight that they can't win. So we go on and we have Jamie going and calling uh, for this like offer and so while that's going on we have market equities scrambling to fight up against uh schwartz and meyer so much so that they're going on and trying to buy schwartz and meyer and then dump all the stock <laughs> after they sell it uh so that way they can go and buy this company fire beth but then hire her onto the market equity side because, uh, man, this girl, like, she can really, like, she can really, like, figure out how to, like, F people over. So we need to hire this person after we fire her from the job that she's previously in. So, or she's currently in. So we go on and we have eventually Casey giving... Beth this offer and and I know there's probably some other things going on in episode 8 but I want to get to the big meat and potatoes of episode 8 uh, so because there's a whole thing going on with Kobe and, uh, and Teeter or uh, Teeter in this episode we also have kind of John going and talking to Wade in this episode also so we're going to cover that also so I'm kind of covering the big things. So Beth is going to John and saying like, hey, like we have this big offer deal on the table for this ranch. And so now I want you to look at it because it seems like they were going to offer this to Jamie. And so now I'm like showing this to you. So John, of course, to look at it and it's like, well, what if we don't exactly take this deal? Beth is to say they're going to come and try to get the ranch anyways, and then they'll, uh, they will not give us this kind of money for this ranch. And, like, eventually, like, we won't be, like, as in a good of a place. And, like, this ranch will get ruined. And, like, eventually we'll lose everything is basically like like these people won't be rich anymore so john is kind of hear all this business talk and and how this ranch isn't going to really make it past three or four more years like at best and john is like well no like there has to be another way and so that's that's his consensus is like no like i'm gonna like I'm going to stay here <laughs> and keep doing this. I don't care, like, because I have to keep my promise to somebody, which I'm assuming that's his dad. Uh, like, he has to keep his promise about this. So, and he's not going to break his promise, supposedly. So, so now let's cover uh, John is to eventually bump into Wade and his other guy. And so John, of course, is to 
like get into a fight with not Wade but his son and start beating him up and so we have John who's saying to Wade it's like well hey like I gave you employment and like I gave you this and I gave you that and like I gave you a ton of stuff I gave you everything and so like look where you are now so it seems like these characters have really had some history and so it's also coming down that John wants to eventually fight with Wade at some point and so does Wade where it's like hey man if you want to stop punching at uh at the cub you can go after the bear anytime you want and John's like well yeah as soon as I get uh what's mine back so What eventually ends up happening is now Wade and <clears throat> Wade and uh, Wade and his son are eventually to go and find Colby and Teeter and they're going on and swimming in this pond and it seems like they're going to skinny dip. So what ends up happening is Wade is going to go into this water and trample these two in this water and kill them both and then get out of the water. And I'm assuming that both Kobe and Teeter are both dead now to send this message. And like, I don't know how they can like figure out <laughs> Like, what is, like, Wade gonna do to eventually say, yeah, that was me? Like, no, he's not. But I'm assuming at some point, probably in the next episode, they're gonna realize that both of these characters are missing. Like, they didn't go and run off together. <laughs> Whatever. But then eventually when they find out that both of them are dead and they were trampled to death, basically. Or maybe they're just gonna be injured, weirdly. I doubt it. Like, I, I would assume they would be dead at this point. Because being trampled by a horse, like, that's not a, that's, it's not an easy thing to just walk away from, but uh, I don't know. Um, so, we'll see in the next following episodes whether they confirm their death or not. So, we have in this episode, so, John is going off to try and buy another horse, but not only buy another horse, but the guy who's riding it. Uh, to try and do some Yellowstone marketing of sorts. Like, he's basically going and trying to, like, buy a race car so that we can slap his logo on it, is kind of what he's doing here. So, we have these people doing some tryouts, and John's looking at some people, and so... We, of course, have kind of several different people. It seems like Rip is to be like familiar with some of them and so on and so forth. So Casey is to arrive to go on and talk to John about things. And then he is to leave. And then Rip and John are to, of course, talk about like, well, hey, like, aren't you going to say anything to me about the whole like, uh, like marriage proposal kind of thing? And so Rip is like, well, I think the main reason why people don't want to talk to you is really just because they don't want to let you down or they don't want to like disappoint you. And so like if something isn't going to work out like, or if something isn't going to work out the way that they want it to, like they don't want to go to you with some kind of failure or something that went horribly awry where like Rip is to go off and try to sell this horse uh, to like Sid Steiner and John is even to mention, it's like, well, hey, like that horse like bucked really good for even me. So like, I don't understand like why like Sid Steiner just didn't want to buy this horse. So we, so we go on and so Rip is going with Lloyd to release a horse out in the wild and so Lloyd's like ah Rip you softy and so Rip is really uh quiet in the 
drive to where both Rip and Lloyd are going. And Lloyd's like, why are you so quiet? And Rip is like, I'm trying to come up with the right words here. I'm trying to come up with the right thing to say. And so Rip and Lloyd go and release this horse. And so Rip is like, well, hey, like, um, you know, at some point I'm probably going to need a best man at some point, right? For this whole wedding thing, right? And so Lloyd is like, well, like Casey's best, bro best brother, it's probably a good thing to just ask him, right? And so Rip is just like, well here's the thing about that it's like like i don't know like i think it's probably better that you're my best man <laughs> and so I'm like well yeah because they like both rip and lloyd like they've been like such like good friends and and like they've really just like if anything like other people have come and gone but like lloyd has always like been there seemingly through most of this uh, this show, and if anything, like, Lloyd has always been loyal to Rip, uh, t to a certain extent, and whichever one have you, for his own purple personal purposes. So, both Rip and Lloyd are to go on, and are to go to this bar, because Roy's, or Lloyd's celebrating, uh, like, the whole wedding thing, and everything like that, and so... All of a sudden, we end up finding Walker, the guy who had left X amount of episodes ago. The guy who almost knifed Rip, Rip at one point. Walker is going and, uh, and singing a song into this bar. And Lloyd is going and hearing Walker singing along here. And Lloyd is like, shouldn't that guy be dead? And... So all of a sudden, Rip just kind of looks ticked at this point. And, like, so we'll see within the following episode what's going to happen with this whole ordeal. And if uh, Walker is going to uh, make it to the next episode alive or not. So, uh, is there anything left possibly to cover here? Um, there probably is. Uh, I'm trying to scratch my brain to think if there's anything else. I think I covered most of the broad strokes of this one. There might be some tiny things here and there. There might be some business talk in these episodes and whatever that I probably didn't do my best at. But like, oh, well, like on to the next review, <laughs> on to the next one. And we'll see how I'm going to attack that. But I think I can feel okay about most of what I had said here. Um, because if I were to have gone and backed over through things, I probably would have gone and done it worse. I know that. <laughs> so with that said, like I'm I'm kind of like it's always like it's always that part in every single review where like I'm just kind of scratching and I'm just like, hmm, like I think I like I feel like I forgot 18 things um, and I'm just trying to like scrape, scrape the back of my brain uh, to feel if I, if I uh, feel if I forgot anything. So if I did uh, rebuttal in the next one, uh, but I think I'm okay with what all I had said here uh, where I approached this because it kind of went into the bigger events. And so, yeah, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, on to the next one. Uh, and I don't know when that's going to be. <laughs> Hopefully, if I'm consistent here, I could be consistent. But I am going to consistently say that now I'm going to get out of here. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.